Unlike most who run for office, I know what it's like to struggle, and I know what it is to achieve dreams my parents couldn't have even imagined. I know what we are capable of if we choose hope, if we come together to fight for each other, to open doors for each other across every neighborhood in every corner of this state. I'm Wes Moore, and this is what I'll fight for as the governor of Maryland. All right. U.S. Army combat veteran and former CEO of the Robin Hood Foundation, Wes Moore, is running to be Maryland's next governor. He joins a crowded field of candidates vying to replace Republican Governor Larry Hogan, whose term limit will be up at the end of this year. And Wes joins us now. Hello, my friend. Welcome Good to uh, welcome to politics <laughs> as a real candidate. Tell us why you want to be governor of Maryland. Uh, it, it's great to be with you, and thank you. And, and, and I just feel like in this moment that coming out of the pandemic, that we have got to build a broad coalition to focus on creating economic opportunity and closing the wealth gap. That, that economic opportunity is, is readily available to some, and it's just dangerously absent to others. And, and I've seen that firsthand, not only in my own life, uh, having having watched my my, my mom, who's a single mom, uh, get you know the first job that gave her benefits when I was 14 years old. And this is a woman with a master's degree. And I know that we right now that Maryland is, is one of the wealthiest states in the country, but also one of the most inequitable. And so we cannot have world class schools and chronically underfunded ones living next to each other. You can't have world class health institutions and people who can't afford to be treated in them. And so I feel like this is a moment, this is a generational moment for us to really rethink how do we create structures that just don't leave so many people, that don't leave anybody behind. So, um, you know, uh, Wes, uh, and by the way, congratulations on jumping into the race. So excited for you. Um, Thank you. Elijah Cummings was obviously uh, a good friend of mine for a long time, good friend of Mika's and mine, married us. Uh, and, and, you know, we spent a good bit of time with him. He devoted his entire life to trying to make things better for the people of Baltimore. Uh, and yet, as you know, um, progress has been so slow over the past 40, 50 years. Um, what can you do to make a difference where so many good men and women uh, have tried to do what you're saying you want to do? Uh, they've spent their entire lives, like Elijah, trying to make a difference. And Elijah made a difference in, in, in quite a few areas. But still, Baltimore is hurting. The state of Maryland is hurting. What can you do differently? It's, 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 a, it's a great question, Joe. And, and you know, Elijah was, was a mentor of mine as well, and a dear mentor. And, and I know this was something that pained him so deeply about how can we continue to build up a place that is not just, you know, my hometown, but you can't understand my story without understanding Baltimore. And, and the thing that I also know is that in this moment, we have to also reshape the conversation around Baltimore. The reality is that you cannot have a thriving Maryland if you do not have a thriving Baltimore. You cannot have explosive growth within Maryland if it is not mirrored by what's happening in the Baltimore region. And so one of the things that we are that we are, will do is really create an entire Baltimore Renaissance strategy and one that is not competing with other parts of the state, but one that is complementary to the growth of every single part of this state, that, that Baltimore is the home of so many assets and Maryland as a whole is a place with tremendous assets where we are asset rich, but we are strategy poor. We've got to change that dynamic, and we can, and Baltimore is going to play a really important role in that. Hey, Wes, it's Willie. Congratulations on getting in, into the race. Uh, full disclosure, Thanks, I've known you for a long time. You're a dear friend of mine. Uh, I'm proud of you for getting into this thing. Um, you, you know, people who don't know your story, you, can't, you come from Baltimore. Your father passed away when you were almost four years old. Um, you went on and, and kind of found yourself over those years through Baltimore and New York and became a Rhodes Scholar joined the 82nd Airborne, served in Afghanistan. Most recently, you ran Robin Hood, the foundation here in New York, one of the biggest poverty-fighting organizations in the world. So I guess the question for me, Wes, is every time I've been around you, every time you come on this show, I get a text or a comment, that guy should run for something. He should run for something. <laughs> and clearly, your moment has come now. So why do you think, as you looked at this field, there are a lot of people who want to be governor. Why do you think you're the guy in this race? 
Well, I, I think my experience to lead in this moment, uh, it is both professional and it's personal. You know, I, I believe uh, that the experience that I have is both unique and it's diverse, where uh, both from a, from a personal family perspective, uh, you know, I, I've seen what it's like where so many of the challenges that many Marylanders are facing right now, the insecurity, the fear about the future, that was the same fear that my family felt. And I saw what it was like having my mom have to try to navigate that on her own. Uh, and I know from a professional experience, you know, having a chance to, you know, to be a, a captain in the 82nd Airborne Division, lead soldiers in combat, to having a successful small business in Baltimore that helped first generation students make it to and through college, uh, you know, leading one of the largest nonprofits in the United States with a focus on poverty. You know, I, I've seen firsthand how systems can work for some, but how they don't work for others. And I think the unique perspective is that we are bringing a broad lens and a very future facing lens as to how we can think holistically about these challenges we are facing and these opportunities that we are not yet seizing. Because we cannot think that, uh, that the individual good deeds alone are going to cure us from darkness. And that, that if we try, if we do not focus on the systems that are putting so many people in so many precarious situations in our state, then we will just repeatedly find ourselves cleaning up the debris that comes from broken systems. All right, candidate for governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, congratulations and thank you very much for being on the show. We look forward to covering you.